Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today, I have a message about how to how it is that Christians deal with things like despair, fear, doubt, confusion, and anxiety. Feelings that maybe the world might refer to as being part of the diagnosis of depression or anxiety. You know, we as Christians know that, that the men of this world have uh, substituted vain philosophy for the true healer, Jesus Christ, and that uh, they try to make believe that such things are a mental illness when in fact it's a spiritual problem. And as Christians, when we encounter these feelings in ourselves, we need to know how to deal with them from a scriptural standpoint, the way the Bible tells us to deal with them. So the first thing that I would say to you is that when these feelings come upon us, that in many ways it's quite understandable because the world that we live in is full of confusion and darkness and many evil works. And when someone who is a Christian views these things naturally, it grieves their spirit. Another thing that I would say is there are many sorrows in this world things that happen to us, people that we love, are, are often influenced and affected by evil. And it's not always easy for us to carry these things in our heart, particularly as sisters. So what I would say is that there are many things in the scripture that speak to these issues, and I probably could go on for several hours. But rather than do that, I'm just going to kind of help you get started in the Word of God and uh, begin your own path of recognizing how to deal with this. You know, as Christians, we know that our source of truth is the Word of God. And the Word of God for for those who speak English is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Other versions of the Bible are corrupted in order to mislead. And so even though sometimes the language in the King James can initially be difficult, if we stick with it, we will be greatly blessed. So how is it then that we deal with these things? Well, let's begin in the Word of God and the letter written by John, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's begin uh, with verse 4. And these things write we unto you, that your joy might be full. This, then, is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, and he is the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. The reason I chose this particular, actually I was led to this particular scripture when in prayer about this topic today. The reason why we want to ponder this scripture is to recognize sometimes habits that we have that make us fall into a spiritual darkness. And that is when we inadvertently end up spending too much time in the world doing worldly things, preoccupied with our own desires, our own will, our own lives. So, for example, when we focus on the things the enemy is doing, that this kind of focus will, will change our feeling because that is the kind of spiritual food that we are eating. We know that the Word of God is the bread of life. We know that we are commanded to abide in God's Word, that this is how we find our sustenance. So when we start to fall into feelings of despair, confusion, sorrow, depression, anxiety, and fear, often it's because we have 
they become distracted by, by things that present themselves to us in our lives. And if we notice this happening, if we turn away from it and turn again to dwelling in God's Word, that this is often going to solve the problem. The problem being that we were feeding on darkness rather than feeding on light. These days it's very popular to do something known as internet research, where people look online to uh, watch and pray, in other words, to see what's happening in the world. And the trouble with that is, and I'm not condemning the practice of looking online to see what's happening, certainly to to be aware of things happening in the world is a good thing. But what happens with the internet is it draws you in. And it was constructed in such a way as to do that. So one can find oneself having gone to the internet to, to look for one thing or the other, or to look for what's happening on a given day, that then somehow, even without them being really aware of it, they get drawn into watching this thing after that thing after that thing and so on. And so very quickly, they have filled their hours with time spent in the darkness. And for that reason, while it's difficult to do initially, it's good to develop a habit of disciplining how much time one spends on the internet. And I would also advise people to first in the morning, when you before you do anything else, to seek the Lord in prayer and, and read in His Word. Spend some time with Him, because this will strengthen you and fortify you against any attacks that come from the enemy. Satan likes to whisper in our ears. He he likes to say things like, "This is terrible. What if what if your children aren't saved b before this happens?" Or he likes to whisper in our ear, you're no good. You know, you know that you have evil in your heart. <laughs> you know, this kind of thing. He likes to make us feel inadequate and helpless and confused and lost and sad and fearful. When we notice these things happening, we have to tune out that voice and tune in to the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. And the way that we do that is to dwell in his word. So we do know that God, from the scripture, that God is light and he's truth. And the way that we dwell with him is to spend time in his word and particularly to ask him in prayer about any given situation that we face. So when we are confronted with sad and, and troubling circumstances, fearful circumstances. Maybe there are extreme things happening in our immediate vicinity with violence or with the weather. When we f encounter those things, it's very important to keep turning to the Lord in prayer. The scripture says, casting all our cares upon him, for he careth for us. You see, God cares for us. But if we don't take those things as an opportunity to have our relationship with him grow stronger, then they will make our relationship with him grow weaker. I've often prayed to God for strength. And it's funny because usually the way he will answer that prayer is by giving me a difficult situation that brings me to my knees before him asking for his guidance and mercy in that situation. This is how we become stronger. When we're confronted with difficulties, with sorrows, with pains, with temptations, with trials, with fearsome things, if we use, if we take those experiences before the Lord in prayer and then look into his word for guidance, that then those things will be transformed from things that weigh us down into things that strengthen our faith. Let's go now to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. Second, uh, sorry, I went to 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1 and 
verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. When a person has been saved by Jesus Christ, so they love the word of God, and when they have heard the word of God, and they loved it, and they obeyed it. And they obeyed it by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. And they received the Holy Ghost. That they, What they have done by doing this is demonstrate their love for God. And God has promised that those who love him and obey him, that he will bless. This is found throughout the scripture. So if we have done this, and we are seeking to walk in his will every day, then we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear at all. The enemy likes to talk to us and remind us of things that might have been true before we were saved. But now that we have been saved, any fault that we have, any error we make, we can take that before the throne and he is faithful and just to forgive us that thing. We don't have to live in condemnation. We also know that because we love the Father, and we have obeyed his Son, Jesus Christ, in all things, that because of that, when we ask him for something, his promises are yea and amen. When we ask something that's in God's will, he will not turn us away. The thing is that many people make the mistake of wanting God to do for them their own will rather than God's will. So it's important to recognize that God is God and we are his people. And if we're asking him something, we should do so honoring him, saying, Father, if it be thy will, if it be thy will, not my will, but thine be done. Even Jesus Christ himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he went to the cross. He prayed that prayer. He said, If it be possible, let this cup be taken from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see, as Christians, we are always learning how to trust God to know what's right and to know that we don't necessarily know what's right. And when we do that, of course, his promises to those who love him are yea and amen. And we know that he hears our cries, he catches our tears, and he cares for our heart. All we have to do is continually go to him because that's the whole point. The whole reason God created people was that some would choose to worship him and love him. No matter what happens to us then, before salvation and after salvation, those who are chosen in him, in Jesus Christ, before the foundation of the world, what it is that we do is that no matter what happens, we turn to him. Let's go now to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So this is a promise to God's people, those who have the righteousness of Christ. Those that obeyed the gospel, had their sins remitted, and now have the power of God living in them so that they can walk in God's righteousness, so that we are able to be holy people. When we do this, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. This means that when we hear scary things on the internet about pestilences, about wars, about famines, about invasions, about uh, uh, 5G, about uh, CERN, and, and 
aliens and so forth. When we, when we hear these things, we know that the promises of God are yea and amen. So, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon. It doesn't matter what it is. It might be some weird electromagnetic pulse that's designed to um, entrain the brains of people who have eaten certain things. But if you're a Christian, if you're in Jesus Christ, this is promised to you. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. The way to handle things like sorrow, despair, fear, anxiety, doubt, confusion, fear, any of these things, the way to handle it is to turn to God's word and find comfort there, knowing, knowing that God is not a liar. And Satan likes to say, oh, well, you're not good enough in this way, or you're not good enough in that way. And, and to, to try to manipulate you into to feeling that you're not worthy of God's promises. But you see, none of us ever was worthy of God's promises. It's only that we obey Jesus Christ in his gospel, that we have his worthiness, that he makes us worthy. So when the enemy whispers that in your ear, you can just say to him, you can say, um, in Jesus' name, depart from me, because I am a blood-bought child of the living God, and I seek him in all things, and I love him, and his promise is unto me, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. So I hope this message has been a blessing to you. And feel free to comment below or to write to me in an email if I may be of service to you in your walk with Jesus Christ in any way. And please know that all of you remain in your, my prayers, whether I know you or not. And let this word go forth and, and draw many people into the true, the true righteousness of God and how it is that we don't have to fear, even in very fearsome times. For he is with us. He is with us. All right, then.